we are going into the last part of the lesson ripping gold from soil in the previous classes what are the things that we learned we learned that there are two types of ways in which we can have a uh, plantlet isn't it that is through vegetative propagation and through sexual reproduction there are different ways of vegetative propagation which are the different ways that we learned yes layering budding and grafting and what about sexual reproduction what did we learned we learned that we can make different good quality seeds through different methods or good quality plantlets through different methods one of the method is hybridization so we learn what are what is hybridization which are the different types of hybrid plants that is available in coconut and many other vegetables isn't it then we also learned about tissue culture in the last class what did we learn we learned that not only seeds and good quality plantlets are needed for the proper growth and good yield of the plants but also soil is important so the quality of the soil is important the fertility of the soil is important so there we learned how we can increase the fertility of the soil so two methods what the farmers have been doing we went through so which are those two methods one is crop rotation and the other one is inter cropping so we know what is crop rotation that is uh, uh, different types of crops are cultivated in intervals between the main crops and what is inter cropping inter cropping means along with the main crops small crops are grown in between where there is place such type of method is called as inter cropping and also we learned about the different pesticides and fertilizers the bio pesticides and fertilizers and also we learned how to make a bio pesticide so this is what we learned in the last class now are do we grow only uh, food crops so we were talking all this time about food crops isn't it which are the different crops other crops that we cultivate for our needs throughout the whole lesson we were learning about the different types of food crops so which are the different other crops that we can do cultivation and for what is it used for the first plant which we produce which is not used for food purposes the first one is cotton it is already given in your textbook so we know what is cotton isn't it why is cotton used yes we know cotton is used to uh, make fibers uh, to make material is it dress materials and bed sheets and all other things cotton cotton products come out of the cotton so what is cotton cotton is a very important fiber crop it is cultivated in india so how is cotton grown cotton is grown um, on a Uh, in a large basis and uh, it comes out as a pod and the cotton is taken and it is used as a fiber for production of cloth and the seeds are separated and uh, it is used as a cattle feed and also oil is obtained for industrial purposes from cotton so cotton has two purposes the cotton what we get from the cotton plant is used as a fiber and the seeds can be used as a cattle feed and also it can be used for producing oil which is used for industrial purposes so this is the use of cotton the next one which you can see is jute what is jute it is very familiar with us isn't it jute is a type of plant from which we get jute fiber it is mainly used to produce jute and india is the largest producer of jute in the world so what is uh, done to the jute the jute fiber is obtained from 
the stem of the plant. It looks like bamboo. You can see the picture here. Uh, jute fiber is obtained from the stem of the plant. The sheaves of the um, stem is cut. They are soaked in water and uh, we, uh, kept for retting. Then they are beaten up and the fiber is separated. So we know the sack which we use um, to bring, uh, what is that, um, rice at home. And many other things for tying, when you go to the shop for tying uh, the grocery and all those things, jute fiber is used. Okay, so jute fiber is mainly used for making sack and uh, uh, for th thread, uh, use making of thread and all those things. The next one which you can see in the textbook is coir. Coir is very familiar to us, isn't it? Coir, from where do we get coir? From the coconut husk and it is main, main, uh, mainly produced in Kerala, we know that. So what? how do we get coir? The husk of the coconut is soaked in water, they are beaten up and the fibers are removed and they are made into threads. And these coir robes or threads is used for making different coir items. We know we are in Kerala. In Kerala, coir is produced in large quantity and we know different coir products, isn't it? So you can see the different coir products here which is produced out of coir fiber. So these are some of the main uh, non-food item, non-food plants which are grown in our country and which we use for our daily needs. Now next we go on to something called as integrated farming. What is integrated farming? From the word itself we can understand that it is combination of something, isn't it? Integrated together. So what is integrated farming? Look at the picture which is given in your textbook. Okay, what can we see there? Yes, we can see a house. Cow shed is there. Biogas plant is there. A pond is there. Vegetable garden is there. A compost, compost pits are there. And lot of trees also there in the compound. You can see fields also are there in the compound, isn't it? So how are cattle rearing and paddy cultivation related? There is a question, there are a few questions given in the textbook there. How are cattle rearing and paddy cultivation related? What is the connection between paddy cultivation and cattle rearing? Yes, we know that the waste, the, has, uh, the waste uh, after taking the paddy, the hay and all those things can be used as a cattle feed. Then, how are the organic waste from homes and agricultural fields utilized? What can be the use of slurry formed after the production of biogas? What are the advantages of integrating more than one field of agriculture? So, what is called as integrated farming? What did you understand from that picture? We you know that the paddy field is there. The waste Hay from the paddy can be used as a feed for the animals, for the cattle, isn't it? Then what all can be used if it is all together like this, a big farm, just imagine. Yes, the cow dung of the um, cow can be used as a manure for the vegetable garden. Then they were talking about slurry from the biogas. What is slurry? If you have a biogas plant at home, we know we put the waste and we get the gas for which can be used for cooking in the kitchen. That is called as biogas. As we put the waste, a water comes out of the biogas plant. That is called as slurry. So that is a natural um, fertilizer and pesticide which can be used for vegetables. So it is a biofertilizer. Also, it is a biopesticide, the slurry which we get from the biogas plant. So, it can be used in both ways as a chemical, as a biofertilizer and as a biopesticide. Then, the waste, the waste is put into a compost pit there, isn't it? So, what can we do? All the waste of the home, if it goes into the compost pit, it can be used as a biofertilizer for the vegetable plants. And what else can be done? 
the waste of the home can be used in the ponds where the fishes grow. So this type of agriculture or farming is called as integrated farming. So in integrated farming, it is not only vegetables or paddy what we grow, but along with that we can do cattle rearing, we can have fishes in the pond, we can grow fishes nowadays, many people are doing fish cultivation. So all that can be done together if you have a little uh, bigger area at home. So this type of farming is called as integrated farming. you can see another picture given in your textbook that is on the pond ducks are uh, a place is ready, made ready for the ducks so what is the benefit of that it is given in your textbook what is the benefit of that the ducks if the um, hoop of the duck is placed about the fish pond if you have a fish pond and if you are growing ducks the hoop of the duck is kept above the fish pond so what is the benefit of that yes we know the ducks will ducks want water to live isn't it they swim in the water so the droplings of the duck, duck it will fall into the pond so that will become food for the fishes to eat and also it becomes manure for the different algae and the aquatic plants and uh, there are many other um, organisms which are living in the water, we know snails will be there, small frogs will be there, fishes will be there, all that is there in the pond. So the droplings of the duck will become food for those uh, aquatic organisms and fishes. And not only that, those algae and aquatic plants and small fishes be can become food for the ducks too. So that is also another method of integrated farming. So what is the meaning of integrative farming? Integrative farming means all types that is not only uh, uh, vegetables or uh, uh, agriculture but along with that we cultivate, we have uh, farm uh, cattle rearing also. Not only cattle rearing, fish farming, cattle rearing, everything together when we do that is called as integrated farming. Another thing which you can see in the textbook is agriculture and cattle rearing. Agriculture and cattle rearing together it is called as integrated farming. This method is mainly used in Kerala. It was earlier, uh, traditionally this existed in Kerala. Nowadays people are coming back into that old method. So when they had acres of land they used to do farming. Along with the, they, that they used to do cattle rearing and uh, this cultivation of fish and everything. So that type of method is called as integrated farming. Cows and buffaloes can be reared along with paddy cultivation. Fodder grass can be cultivated in coconut fields and rubber plantation. What is fodder grass? Fodder grass is the grass which we use to give as food for cattle. So between I told you intercropping there fodder grass can be cultivated in the coconut plantation areas where there is little place. So that cultivation is done to be, uh, give food for the cattle. The straw obtained from the paddy cultivation, the bran obtained from husking paddy grains etc. can be given as uh, cattle as fodder. Goats, ducks, hens etc. can be reared in the coconut fields also. So, we know the ducks and hens and everything can be left free. If we have a, a big compound, there we can have this integrated farming because the fodder grass can be grown there, the husk and the 
waste straw of the paddy can be used as food for the cattle. Then in the coconut farms, we can leave the ducks and the hens so that they can um, have their food from the coconut farm. So all this together, when we uh, have farming together, that is, it is a big uh, farm. Usually in farms, they have this type of air. Food is cultivated. All the other types of um, uh, agriculture uh, goes on. And along with that cattle rearing and um, uh, what is that um, uh, cultivation of hen and duck and uh, fish farming and everything goes together. That type of farming is called as integrated farming. So with that we come to the end of this lesson. What are the different activities that we can do there? You have to write down what is integrated farming in your notebook. And also you have to prepare an agricultural album collecting news reports and pictures from the uh, newspaper and magazines. You have newspaper and magazines and you have a lot of time. So please make an agricultural album and uh, you have to submit it. We are using the different newspaper cuttings and pictures what is available. Thank you children.